Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about Nintendo Switch emulation with Ryu Jinx, and Ryu Jinx just got a brand new update. So as of version 1.1.1291, there's a huge improvement to Vulkan. So if you use the Vulkan renderer, it fixes rendering in Mofumo Fu Sensen. It fixes missing graphics in Pac-Man 99, Tetris 99, and Super Mario Bros. 35. It fixes missing backgrounds in Tempest, Enchanted in the Moonlight, My Last First Kiss, Irresistible Mistakes, Diabolic Lovers Games, and likely other visual novels from Voltage. And on top of that, it fixes missing coins in WarioWare Get It Together, and missing player indicators and radars in FIFA games. Ryu Jinx is 100% free, it's open source, and currently the best Nintendo Switch emulator out there. Moving on, and we're talking about MAME, which stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator, depending on how you want to interpret that and MAME version 0.265 just dropped. So I would argue this is a pretty big month for MAME. I mean, they say they now have support for touchscreens on Linux and Windows 8 or later. And on top of that, a pair of 1970s portable computers from IBM are now emulated, and that is the 5100 and the 5110. On top of that, they say you can now plug a virtual super game module into your emulated ColecoVision. And I'm going to butcher this one, but I'm going to try. They say for the first time you can play Konami's Takimeki Memorial Oh Shit Your Heart Games. And in addition to all of that, like usual, there's a whole bunch of bug fixes, improvements, and even more. I'll drop a link to the entire change log in the description below. On a side note here, for the SNES, Rockman Soccer is now working. Next up, we're talking about PS2 emulation with PCSX2, and PCSX2 got a small fix here that some people might like. So if you play Lord of the Rings Twin Towers, there's a fix here that stops random garbage from appearing on screen. Here's the before, and well, here's the after. Next up, we're talking about Doom 64, but on the Sega Dreamcast, and yes, this game is being ported to the Sega Dreamcast. I'll drop a link to this video in the description below in the event that you wanted to check it out. It's currently in development, but looking pretty good. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's the same person who is working on the N64 Open Lara port. Unfortunately, I've got no idea what happened with this project. Next up, we're talking about a game that looks pretty cool. It's called Moon Samurai, and it just appeared over on Kickstarter. They're looking for $75,000, and they've currently raised $15,641. The kicker here is that this game appears to be approved by Reggie, who says, take my money. They say this game is an action-adventure in a futuristic setting, and they say all characters, animations, and environments are hand-drawn in pixel art. There's over 30 different combat mechanics and environment that's very interactive, and even more. This game will be heading to Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch, and the lowest tier to get a digital copy of the game is 15 bucks. Furthermore, they've already got a Steam page for it. There's already some gameplay on YouTube, and I'll drop a couple of links in the description below. I don't normally back Kickstarters, but this one I may, or I may just wait for it to release on Steam. Next up, we're talking about some Linux stuff, and one of my favorite Linux distributions, Endeavor OS, just got a brand new update, Gemini. Now, Endeavor OS is a rolling release, but at the same time here, Gemini ships with Linux kernel 6.8.7 and Mesa 24.0. It also features KDE Plasma 6 for both the live environment and offline installation option. Interestingly here, the live environment runs X11, and when Plasma is chosen, it defaults to Wayland. You can override that and switch back to X11 though. They also switched from NVIDIA DKMS to NVIDIA packages. They say that NVIDIA DKMS was causing issues, like freezing the live environment when NVIDIA boot was chosen on the ISO. Endeavor OS is 100% free, it's open source, and if you were ever interested in trying out Arch, but maybe you were intimidated by it, Endeavor OS may be the gateway you're looking for. It's built on Arch. Next up, we're talking about some Linux hardware, and the new Slimbook Fedora 14 and 16-inch laptops have been revealed. They both feature the Intel Core i7-13700H processor. The 16-inch version features the NVIDIA 4060. As for pricing, the 14-inch version starts at around 1400 euro, which is about, I think, 1500 USD. And the base one here has 16 gigs of RAM, but you can upgrade it. And the 16-inch version is a little bit more expensive. I mean, it does have that NVIDIA RTX in it. 
and that one's priced at about 1800 euro or just over 1900 usd and speaking about fedora fedora linux 40 has just dropped the flagship version of fedora 40 ships with kernel 6.8 and also gnome 46 they say here they've got some performance improvement including significant speed boost in terminal now if gnome is not your thing they also offer it with kde xfce cinnamon and even more moving on and we're quickly talking about flathub and flathub just got a brand new makeover so the new homepage has a banner with five featured apps they're updated weekly they've got an app of the day a new group for trending apps and a tab section with trending popular new and updated apps they say this has been almost a year in the making. Now, some people don't like Flathub, but I do, and I'm not alone here. The latest estimate is that Flathub has 3.13 million active users. So let me know your thoughts about Flathub in the comments below. Do you use it? Do you not use it? And why? Next up, we're talking about Steam. And this is a friendly heads up that Steam has updated the refund policy surrounding pre-purchasing. They say this change covers titles that are in pre-purchase and offer advanced access. Playtime acquired during the advanced access period will now count towards the Steam refund period. Now, I'm on the fence about this one. To be clear, I don't normally pre-order games, and I didn't understand why they introduced this one until someone explained it to me. So apparently people were pre-ordering games and beating them during the advanced access period and then refunding them essentially playing through the entire game for free. And I can understand why Valve would introduce something like this, but at the same time here, this does create a bit of a problem. So it says right here in Steam refunds, and sometimes they are a little bit lenient, but at the same time here, it's a two hour period. If you play a game more than two hours, there's no guarantee you're gonna get it refunded. So let's say hypothetically, someone were to pre-purchase a big AAA game to get advanced access to it a few days before it actually released. And let's say reviews were embargoed until release date. They wouldn't know if there's any major issues. They're gonna have to explore things on their own. And maybe there's some server issues. Maybe it takes a while to connect. Maybe the game is broken in some aspects. They're not going to know, and if they're sitting around for more than two hours, they can't refund it. Now, that's just one hypothetical situation, and there might be more of them. I do understand the bigger issue here, people beating the game and then refunding it. But at the same time, I'm wondering if they could have handled this one a little bit differently. And speaking about heads up, next up, this is a quick one. There's a brand new ROM hack for NHL 94 on the Sega Genesis. It's for the 2024 NHL season, and they've updated it for the 2024 playoffs. I mean, this is a pretty extensive ROM hack. They've gone through and renamed players, updated arenas, logos, colors, uniforms, and even more. They've even made some revisions to gameplay and graphics. If you're a hockey fan, this may be one worth checking out. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Next up, we're arguably looking at the Wii Cube 64 of the gaming handheld world. This is a DIY Ryzen 7 handheld. It features an R7 7840HS, and they're calling it the JTEC Comrade 8. This thing has 32 gigs of RAM, 2 terabytes of storage, a built-in battery, an 8-inch touchscreen, and it does run Windows. And yes, it's ugly as all get out. However, this thing is a performance beast. The person says it runs everything they've thrown at it, including Final Fantasy VII Remake and Helldivers 2 at 60 plus FPS. It even runs Beat Saber well enough to use on their VR headset. And I'm assuming it would be an emulation beast. This thing even has a built-in kickstand, and from what I can see, an LED in the fan. So let me know your thoughts about the JTEC Comrade 8 in the comments below. I think it's amazing. Next up, we're talking about NewPipe, a free and open source streaming app for Android. And NewPipe just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 0.27.0 is the latest update. They've got a whole bunch of fixes here, including some improvements. They've added support for comment replies, added playlist description to playlist fragment, added an option to reset settings, show overall duration of items in a playlist, and allow ordering of bookmarked playlists. This is 100% free and open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below in the event that you wanted to learn more about it. Next up, we're talking about Discord, and it turns out that billions of scraped Discord messages are now up for sale. Interestingly enough, this isn't necessarily a hack. 
There were bots in a whole bunch of different Discord servers and gobbled up everything. From my understanding, all of this information was kind of already in the public domain, but it turns out there may be one massive issue. And it's in this paragraph here, when you are gathering data about EU citizens, you'll need to have a method in place for those citizens to have their information removed. And as far as I know, there isn't a method to actually remove it. Now, if you've got a Discord server or if you're in servers and you're wondering if those servers have been scraped, there are methods to check that out. I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below and it's got everything there you basically need to know. Moving on and we're talking about Windows and we talked about this one just a little while ago when they were testing it and now they're pushing it out to all users. And here's the headline, Microsoft pushes start menu ads to all Windows 11 users. Yes, your start menu will have ads. Fortunately though, at least for now, there is a way to turn this off. You go to settings, personalization, and then start. Turn off the toggle for show recommendations for tips, app promotions, and more. In my opinion, for a paid operating system, this is kind of crazy and one of the many reasons I use Linux. Next up, we're talking about Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. It was released back in 1999 for the N64, and some brand new codes for this game have just been discovered. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to the YouTube video in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. In that description, they've got a whole bunch of different codes here. The very interesting part about this is the fact that the Konami code is a little bit different than normal. And I'm wondering if there are more codes in different games that we haven't discovered. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.